But God will bring us back to square one in order to what? As it says, teach us, train us. Right? Hey, hey, listen, you know, he is not a cosmic force. He is our father. And he relates to us as, as his children. So if I'm becoming too haughty and too prideful, this is going to be a point today too, I can expect God's loving discipline in my life. And just saying that, you know, kind of scares me. And that's a good kind of fear. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? But our testimony, we, and we must, we must share it. We don't want to be like, like other people that finally get blessed. You know, finally get what they desire and so forth. And then those very things become destructive in their lives. You know, we think of celebrities and so forth. Let me give you a little illustration. Uh, many, many years ago when I first got out of high, out of high school, I, I worked uh, in the post office. I worked in this big uh, place that did the processing of the mail. And, you know, because I was temporary, they would move me from department to department. And each department had a supervisor. And, and we're talking what, back in the, the, the late 70s. Even then they had these little electronic carts that they rode. And they would be wearing their three-piece suits and they'd be riding on these carts. And they'd look on, uh, look on all of us, you know what, you know? <laughs> what, 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 what's that? Peasants. Peasants, okay. You said it, not me. <laughs> and uh, those supervisors, oh, they'd be on those carts and they'd, they'd look down on you like this, like... You know, you're not moving fast enough, or move this, do this, and, and so forth. And, you know, because you're, you know, you're working and you have to do what they say. But they had an interesting system back then. They used to get regular employees and give them supervisor, temporary supervisor positions. And those that did well would, would become supervisors, and those that did not would go back to being a regular employee. Mm -hmm. And I remember this gentleman, I still see his face. He wore a three-piece suit. He was on one of those carts. I did not realize he was a temporary supervisor. But he was so prideful and arrogant. And, and you know, you have to do everything he said. And uh, people disliked him. You, you ever have people in, in your workplace that you dislike? <laughs> people began to really dislike this person because he was mean. He had this position and he abused it. It wasn't long before he went back to his old position, worked on the, on the mail machine, wore like coveralls, and you know what? He had no friends. I remember him standing next to that machine, lonely, just working, nobody talking to him. He burned all his bridges. You know? he, he didn't realize where he came from, and he didn't realize that he could end up right back where he started. <coughs> Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Point number two. Remember the Lord disciplines us. Oh, and it can't be denied. Verse five says he disciplines us uh, as his son. It says, no, uh, know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Okay? And discipline can come in various forms. God's discipline in my life looks different than, than his discipline in your life. Note this, though. Do you know the first way that God disciplines us? Through his word. Parents, what's the first thing you do to discipline your children? You give them, you give them the word. You say, don't do this. That, that is law in your house, right? Don't do this, right? And, and that can come before the spankings and everything else. Right? And it should come before the spankings. Don't do that. You have to set boundaries for the child first. You have to let them know what your word is, what, what the law of the, of the house is, right? Then when they violate that, you use other means, don't you? And whatever you believe in as far as discipline, you know, that's between you and, and, and the police and whatever. <laughs> But first, you give them a word. And that's what God does first and all. He gives us the word. That's why we have to be in the word day and night, as it says. We have to know his laws, his precepts, his guidance, and so forth. It first comes through the word. Then when we disobey this, he'll use anything. He is God. 
It's his universe, amen? He can use whatever you're going through as a tool of discipline. And what drives him in this discipline is his love for you. He disciplines you as a loving father. There's scriptures in your notes. They're there for your own reference. Hebrews 5, 7 through 9, and Hebrews 12, 4 through 13. In Hebrews 5, it says that Jesus himself learned and was disciplined in, in, as he walked this planet in human form, was disciplined by what he suffered. What he suffered. And if he suffered, and learn from his sufferings. Guess what? We get to suffer and learn from our sufferings. Isn't that great? Yeah. No. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the, here's the safety net. Romans 8.28. All things. Romans 8.28. All things work together for good to those who love God. And to those who are called according to his purpose. He's working everything out for your good and for his glory. So every, listen. Every struggle every hardship, lean times and so forth, they're all used by your loving Heavenly Father to train you, to hone you for better days. Amen? As it says, in the end, it may go well with you. You see? You're not living a chaotic life that is out of control and that's just random. You know, all these trials, all these things that happen to you, they're not random things. They are allowed into your life by a loving Heavenly Father who's more concerned with your character development than with your comfort. Can I, can I hear an amen? amen. I know, I'm not asking for a hearty amen, just, a, just an amen. amen. I know, this is tough stuff. Amen. This, but if we really believe that He loves us, if, you, if we really believe that He has our best at heart, then we can go through these things with a different attitude. Amen? Amen. And, and the emphasis is on through. We can say what David said in Psalm 119.71. He said this, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Wow. He can actually say what I went through was good. It was good for me. Because in the midst of it, I learned his word. And... Brother, sister, if you're going through something, go to his word. Please, go to, to his word. That's what, he wants to, that's what he wants to accomplish in us. He wants us to be in his word. His discipline teaches us a few things. You can jot this down. It teaches us to obey.